everyone, today I'm going to show you how to do a composite which is um, a new bed from the White Collection and um, I've got a really sweet baby girl to go on that bed so I'm using Photoshop CC but you can use any program that uses layers um, I have the two files open already in Photoshop here um, so what I will do is I will always do the same thing in the first step. Firstly, I have already edited the, the little girl's image. Um, so it's ready to drop into the, the, the digital template. Um, there's one thing that I actually noticed after opening this app is that she is lit. Um, the windows and doors, it's natural light and they were on the right whilst the bed has got the lighting coming from the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, um, image rotation, flip horizontal and I'm just going to flip her before I transfer her over. So I'm going to grab the layer, I'm going to pop it on top of the bed layer and I'm going to shut down the baby girl. So there we go, she's gone. So we now have one file and we have the digital bed underneath and the baby girl on top. Um, so I think I might not be recording the top of the screen here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I tell you what heading I'm going to. So first of all what we're going to do is reduce the opacity on the baby girl layer and um, we're going to go to edit at the top if you can't see that that's my fault um, we're going to go to transform um, and we're going to go to scale and now I'm going to press the shift button and drag the corner in to make her smaller to resize her to the size of the bed um, by holding the, um, the shift button down and the corner you will retain the proportion so she's not going to end up distorted so actually the good thing about this is not a fluffy layer underneath. I wanted to do a tutorial where you've got a non-fluffy layer underneath because a lot of my digital backdrops have fluffy layers. Um, and some people, when they actually shoot on smooth surfaces and the textures don't match, it can be a little bit more difficult. Not impossible, but a little bit more difficult to do the composite. So now that I've got her sort of roughly where I want her, I'm looking at the curve underneath and I'm actually going to um, zoom in. Oh, I've just got rid of the transformation so that's not good. So let's try again. Edit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So edit. I'm actually going to go to free transform. I'm still going to hold the corner because free transform, what it does, it doesn't just do scale, it does everything so you can rotate as well. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that she sort of the correct size for this bed and doesn't look like some sort of micro baby or some sort of giant baby but as a newborn would in one of these beds. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit smaller and just rotate the angle so okay to recreate what she would have looked like so I think that's about right. I'm going to press enter what I'm going to do is I'm going to now increase this uh, opacity to 100. I'm going to grab the eraser tool. And again, apologies, you can't see it, but I'm telling you what I'm grabbing. So um, hopefully that will help. I'm just going to grab a nice big soft brush. An idea. Okay, this is the eraser tool. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to basically take away um, some of the blanket and some of the backdrop, not all of it, mind you. Nice big soft brush. Okay. So you can see what I have now is this layer. Oh, I missed a corner there. On and off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the zoom tool and get a little bit closer on her. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click darken on this layer. So what that will do is that will now only transfer from the layer underneath the bits of the image that are darker. So that will be um, obviously her skin. Everything that's lighter 
it's not going to come through. Uh, and the reason why I do that, because that method is particularly good for transferring this shadow that you see underneath the baby, where I'm tracing right now, rather than blending um, it in. So I'm going to grab that eraser tool again, and on that layer I'm just going to get rid of this. Um, okay, now obviously with Darken it hasn't actually um, brought through the things that are lighter, so the blanket, parts of the baby skin, the highlights, none of those are visible. So what I'm going to do, so if you look in the right, top right, I'm going to duplicate that layer again, and this time I'm going to change the mode to normal. Now what you'll see is all the lighter parts come through too. So what we need to do now is essentially just paint in the bits that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this layer up. So we're going to go to the bottom, third icon from the left, put, pop in a layer mask, and then go edit, fill with black. So look at the layers palette, what's happening. And now we're just going to grab a white paint brush and we're going to just reveal this layer which is on normal blending mode and what that will do is that will now paint in all those bits uh, that the darkened layer did not have. So all the highlights, the blankets, but what it actually does is it means that that lovely shadow underneath you don't have to mess about with it at all. Um, and just an easy way of doing it so now obviously you now have this pesky edge so on the edge we're going to go a little bit harder on the brush not too hard oh and we've done slightly too much but that's okay because we can go back I just want to see the bits that I've actually missed Okay, here we go. This is where that little blanket blanket ends. So let's just switch back to black. Soften that brush up a little bit. And we want that edge not too hard, but not too hard, but not too soft either. It's going to look false I mean obviously the baby's sharp so you would assume there would be some sharpness on on this blanket but because blankets generally are fluffy uh, it's not necessarily the same kind of sharpness as you get on the edge um oh wrong brush okay so keep swapping back between the white and the black brush and painting as needed okay so now if you look on the top right let me switch off that top layer can you see what I've painted in? Look at the face, the highlights, the forehead. If I just had the top layer and not the darkened layer, this is what you would see. And actually, if this is really useful to switch off the middle layer, just so you can see if there's any bits that you may have missed that are important in terms of highlights or you know, the baby face. That's fine. Okay, let's pop that middle layer back on. Um, and that looks good to me, apart from a very few details. I'm going to go back to the little, the middle layer, grab the eraser, quite hard, and I'm going to see if I can go over this little bit there, because that's a little bit annoying. And I'm also going to do that on the top layer. Not on the mask, but on the actual picture. Um, and let's have a look at the image from a distance. Okay, that looks good. There's a couple of little bits which could bother some people, which are that the blanket that I shot the baby girl on had little and a little knitted texture. So you can see where I've gone darken, the little knitted bits are actually showing through. For me, it doesn't bother me at all because it's perfectly feasible that this curly fur with a sort of smooth middle could have had a pattern on there, no one would ever notice that. And what I love is that those shadows are nice and realistic. Um, so yes, it's actually quite easy to achieve a finished image. As you can see, it looks um, pretty good.
so yeah this is how you would do this type of image with all the light colors do a darken layer and uh, let that work with your shadow so you don't have to do much work on that and then use a the layer on top in normal blending mode um, and what that will do is you can paint in any other bits that you have missed. I hope this helps and see you guys again soon.